Hey, hey, Math Moment Makers, it's Kyle here from MakeMathMoments.com, and I'm super excited today to give you a sneak peek inside a virtual classroom where we explore a concept that uh, sometimes students can struggle with, and we as educators can struggle with trying to teach and reach all of our learners. Today, we're going to dive into a problem-based lesson that is going to leverage context, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what that concept is on the other side. Yeah, so what concept are we talking about? Well, we're talking about introducing algebra using substitution and equivalence in order to emerge the idea of solving equations. How are we gonna do it? Well, we're gonna be heading over to the Make Math Moments uh, full problem-based tasks and units area. Uh, we've got over 40 full units in action right now. And the one we're gonna be looking at is actually this one here, uh, which is called the shot put unit. And we're gonna be diving into day one of the shot put unit with a group of students. This task is available for you to dive into on the makemathmoments.com website. You can just head over to makemathmoments.com forward slash tasks and check it out. Uh, but before you do, let's dive into this classroom experience to give you a sense of how we're gonna introduce this concept and how we're going to emerge the big idea of substitution and actually solving equations near the end of this lesson. That's where this unit will uh, sort of branch off to after this particular lesson. So let's dive in, let's have a look, and also uh, keep an eye for the linear model model that we'll be using throughout. All right, enjoy it and I'll see you on the other side. We're going to be sharing openly. We're not going to be judging what other people say. And I'm going to be asking you to do a lot of things like asking you to do some noticing, some wondering, as well as some estimating, okay? And I'm going to be really strategic about the information I give you so that really nobody can be guaranteed to be correct and no one will really know who's right or wrong. We're just going to go with our intuition. How does that sound, everybody? Uh, let's see in the chat. Is everybody with me here? Awesome. Hello, everybody. Awesome to be hanging out with you. If it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And again, I'm going to be asking you to participate. Here's, I guess, two rules for today. Two rules for today. First off, we're going to try not to utilize our calculators at any point today. So we're going to not use calculators. We're gonna try to find ways that we can find answers utilizing our mental math strategies. However, what I must say though, mental math strategy does not mean that you can't write something down, okay? Mental math just means using your head for the math not doing it all in your head, okay? So we wanna be using our brains, using our minds in order, to, uh, in order to do some of the work here today. The second thing that I'm gonna ask is that you don't rob the opportunity for others to think, okay? So what I mean by this is I don't want you sort of like try your best not to like blurt something out. Also, try your best not to you know, go online and try to like search for things in order to try to get an edge, okay? That's not really fun. It's not, you know, nobody really enjoys that, okay? Um, so we're gonna just go with the moment here, going with your intuition, and hopefully we'll get lots of sharing in the chat. I see lots of hellos in the chat. That's awesome to see. I'm super excited. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a notice and wonder. Now, if, I mean, hey, you're human, so guess what? You notice and wonder all the time. But in particular, the reason why I'm asking you to notice and wonder before I show you this short little video clip is because our brains are actually designed to not notice things unless we really need them, okay? So think about this for a second. If you've ever been in a car before and you've driven somewhere, 
You are noticed that like, there's things happening all around you. There are thousands of things happening. Maybe maybe hundreds of cars you're noticing or, or uh, stores or different people walking on the street. Your brain doesn't notice most of what you pass by. So we're gonna ask you to intentionally be looking for things here. Call it clues, uh, things that you might notice, things that you might wonder, all right? And as the video is playing, I'm gonna encourage you just, you know, point form in the chat to share some of the things you notice, some of the things you wonder. Now remember, we're not judging here. There's no judgment. So you might notice colors. You might notice something that like seems like it's not important, but maybe it really is. So maybe you notice someone in the stands or you notice something uh, in, the, uh, in the video that you'd like to share, okay? Does that sound good? I wanna make sure everyone's sharing at least one thing that they notice and at least one thing that they wonder, okay? So everyone should be sharing here. And I know Miss is watching the chat. She's like, all right, I'm gonna see if they actually do what they need to do here. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start this and uh, let's go full screen there. Uh, I think we are good to go here. I'm gonna share this video. I'm gonna actually let you watch it two times. So the first time through, anything that you notice and wonder, and then the second time through, hopefully you'll notice and wonder a few more things to share as well. Here we go. one thing you should have noticed or wondered in the chat feel free to share it I will play it one more time for you in just a moment I just want to make sure everyone's had an opportunity sometimes you get captivated by the video and, and you didn't think to type so I'm gonna give you an opportunity to hit enter now on anything you've noticed and wondered uh, miss are you seeing anything in the chat the way my screen is set up I can't see the chat at this moment what are you what are you uh, reading in there so far Notice people cheering in the crowd. Notice guy, fans, sports, shot put, cheering. Wonder why is that his routine? Um, notice the red and white flag. How did the people not get hit, scared of being hit? Um, Poland, this dude is from Poland, Poland. A person, I notice a Poland flag. I and love it. Yeah. Love it. Tons and tons. That's exactly what we're after. Like, notice that. Every single thing shared there, like I'm, I'm listening, I'm like, yes, awesome, awesome. So nothing, nothing is off limits here. Uh, of course, keeping it appropriate, but uh, everything we notice and wonder is good. Okay, I'm gonna share it one more time. Any last noticing or wondering, and then we're gonna dive right in here. Awesome, what an awesome, awesome group. So much to notice and wonder here. I would agree, there's so many things. And actually, every time I see this, I've done this with uh, quite a few class, this uh, this particular uh, little activity. And every time I hear something new, which I think is really, really cool. Um, I, I like also just highlighting how it's a different form of throwing than you've ever seen. For those who have never seen this particular sport, it's actually called the shot put. And uh, that ball in the hand is actually called the put. And when you when you use the shot or do the shot put, you're actually throwing it and they, they do it in this very specific manner in order to generate as much power, as much distance as they possibly can. So lots of things here happening. I think we've all noticed, uh, some have noticed it was at the Berlin World Championship. That was Danny I saw, awesome. So much to notice and wonder here. Here's what I'm wondering though, I'm wondering like, I wanna challenge you a little bit today. Now that we have a lot of these ideas and we've seen a lot of these ideas together, I want to give you a different view or a different perspective of this particular shot put 
throwers throw. And it kind of looks like this, okay? Now, uh, typically the, the thrower stands in this like circle here and they can't actually go beyond the edge of the circle. So you'll notice that like usually their foot sort of like stops right there and they start to measure where the ball or the shot put goes from here and they measure how far it actually goes. So here's kind of like a recreation of this specific throw, okay? So there it is. It is leaving his hand and it makes it about this far. And the question I'm curious about and I'm hoping that you might be able to help me out with is about how far do you think he threw the shot put? All right, so we're gonna ask you to make a bit of an estimate here. Now, I wanna warn you that it's impossible for you to know for certain based on what we saw, all right? But some of you may have noticed or wondered different things, maybe just by looking in the perspective in the video, might have given you uh, like some sort of idea, or maybe you've seen this sport before and you kind of get a sense of how far these things can go. Like some people might be like, wow, this, you know, this this will go like uh, 100 meters. Other people might be like, no, it's only like 10 feet. Uh, who knows? But you get to decide the distance and the unit of measure that you'd like to use here. So I want you to think about this first. If you've already shared in the chat, no sweat, no sweat. You'll be able to reshare in a second. But I want you to think about three things here, okay? Before you make your best estimate, I want you to think about two things first and here they are. I want you to think about how far do you think is like too low, like it's not far enough, okay? Like I'll give you an example that might be maybe too obvious. It's like, I think he threw this further than one foot, all right? So like one foot, I feel like you could be riskier, all right? So pick a number, like how far do you think he threw at least? Like you're like, you know what? I feel pretty confident that he threw above this amount, I want you to then also think about a number that you think is like too far, okay? Like if you say like a million feet or a million meters, yes, I agree with you, that is way too far, but I also think that's not being risky enough, okay? I think you can, I think you can like reel that in a little bit. What seems reasonable for you as a too high? Like, nah, there's no way that he threw it this far and I feel pretty confident in it. Once you have those two numbers, I then want you to think about like what feels like your best estimate. So you're kind of setting yourself a bit of a bounds uh, or a bit of a boundary so that you're not just like blindly throwing out a number. You're like kind of thinking about like that too low, that too high. And then obviously your estimate's going to fall somewhere in between those two numbers. Okay, so I'm going to give you about, I don't know, maybe half a minute, maybe uh, maybe 45 seconds to kind of think about those numbers. And then when I tell you, I'm going to have you share all three numbers. We'll have you do like your too low, your too high, and your best guess all in one uh, chat um, entry. Okay, so we can see some of these ideas. How does that sound? Is that cool, everybody? All right, I'm gonna give you some time, some think time on that. So about 30 seconds or so, and then I'll tell you once you're ready, I'll say, okay, let's get these into the chat and then we'll have you hit enter, okay? Once we go, okay, if we're ready to hit enter, uh, here we go, three, two, one. Let's see it in the chat. What do we have, what do we have? All right. Oh, we've got all kinds of goodness, all kinds. Now, I love that we have some two lows and two highs. Here's what I'm gonna focus on though. Up up here on this, uh, this page, I'm gonna do two things. Uh, I see some people are using meters. I see, uh, oh, mostly meters. I'm impressed. I, I always see feet sort of uh, slip in there as well. So we've got lots of meters, I love it. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create like kind of like a bit of a number line for us, just for our estimates. And uh, Miss, if you can like sort of pluck out some of our best estimates, okay? We're not gonna worry about the too low, too high for this. Um, what are some estimates that we have here? Okay, I'm just gonna throw 20 just kind of like here because I don't know what the other values are gonna be yet, but like we'll say 20. We had someone saying 20, awesome. Any, any others?
So it's kind of cool. Like one thing I really love about doing these estimates and the reason why I like to put them on a number line is here's something really cool that I notice when I estimate with a large group of people, whether it's adults or students, what I see is that oftentimes we almost like create ourselves our own range. And it's almost like as a group and actually research shows that if you take like a huge group of people and you have them all estimate, you can almost, almost, almost guarantee like a high, high chance of certainty that if everybody's estimating within this range, that the answer's likely gonna fall somewhere around that range. Maybe a little outside on either end, but oftentimes it's almost like if you combine brain power, right? It's hard for each person individually to be right. But as a group, if we sort of go like, wow, as a group, this is almost like our new range. And here's what we're gonna do today. We're actually gonna use math in order to help us sort of narrow this down a little bit. So what I'd like to do for you is I wanna share something with you and I'm gonna tell you something. First off, um, at this uh, particular event, we didn't have like a tape measure like we didn't have, you know, uh, we didn't even have like a trundle wheel. You know the trundle wheel that's in the math kit? Like it click, 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 and it counts like the meters for you. Is that, is, I was just gonna say, I'm like, is that like a popular tool in, in your classroom? Some people love them, some people hate them. Here in this event, um, the official has a measuring stick. Now it's not like a meter measuring stick. It's not like a yard measuring stick for those who, who are aware of like a yard stick is what they use in the US. Um, this is just like a measuring stick. And I actually don't know how long these measuring sticks are, but what I can tell you is that the official used this measuring stick in order to measure this out. And, and they went ahead and they said, okay, here we go. Um, it was longer than two measuring sticks. It was longer than three, longer than four, longer than five longer than six measuring sticks, but unfortunately they had to pace out the rest because the measuring stick actually was a little longer than the remaining chunk as you can kind of see. And like, I'll even zoom this in for you. Like if I look at that, like it, we're measuring to like right there. We, we're, we're measuring to that spot right there. And it's like, that is not quite as long as one of these measuring sticks, okay? So I know it's like one, two, three, four, five, measure, uh, six measuring sticks and a bit long. So they paced out the rest. At, they said, okay, six measuring sticks. And, oh, they didn't use meters here though, because this was, uh, this was done in feet. And they said that was eight feet long. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to update your estimate based on what you see on the screen, which is gonna force you a little bit to do a little bit of spatial reasoning, like using your visualization skills to go, okay, this is eight feet over here. Like, hmm, what might these measuring sticks be like in, in length? Like how long might each of these measuring sticks be? And then I'm wondering like, can you figure out how far, what is the distance of this, of this entire entire length here all the way to the edge. So we're gonna give you a little bit of time. Now here's the deal. I know we may already, cause I didn't say it yet. Do your best not to hit enter yet. I want you to reason through this, but here's the deal though. You have to help us understand how you came up with your number. Like if you just come up with like a hundred, I'm gonna be like, that's cool and all, but like, how did you get to a hundred? Or like if you come up with 50, 50 feet, I'm wondering like, what did you do? So be very specific. And I'd love it if you wrote it down. If you could take a picture of it, great. If not, you can verbally tell me or type it into the chat once I tell you, once I tell you. So hold back on that. Get your argument together. I always like to say mathematicians are like lawyers. Right now you're devising your plan to sort of present to the group to have them sort of be convinced by your argument, right? When a lawyer goes into a courtroom, they are trying to argue for a certain belief. They want everyone in the room to believe something to be true. That's what we're gonna do as mathematicians. We need to convince people. If you say 100, I don't believe you, okay? You have to have something to back it up, and I'm curious. You can do it in words, you can do it in, in visuals, 
Uh, you can do it in symbols, like math symbols, but either way, you've got to be convincing, okay? So I'm going to give you, I'm going to say like a couple minutes here. I'd love it if you organized your thinking on paper or if you're a, like a digital person and you want to do it in, you know, in your math digital whiteboard or however you choose, that's totally up to you. Or miss, if you have any guidance on that, like where you instruct them to usually sort of share their thinking, totally cool. Um, but we, we do want to get some reasoning behind this. All right, my friends, we've had a little bit of time there. I'm going to encourage you, even if, and here's the other thing too that I, I wish I would have done more of when I was teaching in the classroom, is even if you're not like fully finished with your argument, right? I'm hoping that you're feeling pretty good and you can articulate or you can explain it to someone. Um, if you have an image to share, you can share it in the chat. Awesome. If you'd like to type or describe what your estimate is, uh, your updated estimate and your reasoning, you can type it into the chat or this one's my favorite one. I'm sure it's Mrs. Favorite too. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. So 20 meters. Awesome. So I heard, uh, so you said 20 meters. Do you mean 20 meters or 20 feet or or 20 meters? And then you said each stick was how long? Looks like 10 feet. So you're saying like, if this is 10 feet, and I'm wondering, it's going to be hard for us to get from here to there. I'm wondering if, is there a way that you could tell us like, is there a total in feet that you were thinking before we go back to meters? Like if we maybe worry about this after? Okay, so now I'm wondering, are you happy with thinking if the sticks are 10 feet, are you happy with 60 feet? Like let's pretend like we'll worry about the meters afterwards and try to figure that out. But if this is 10 feet, are you good with 60 feet or do you want to modify that at all? 65 or 67 feet and I'm wondering let's 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 build on this for a second if I bring this visual back up just for a second here here's the visual and I see there was six measuring sticks and then we had eight feet as well I'm wondering so if the if the measuring sticks are 10 feet each so there's like two measuring sticks I need Holy smokes, I need six measuring sticks in total. And I'm, I'm going to do my best to one, two, three, uh, four, uh, five, uh, 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 six measuring sticks. And actually, I'm going to get a little lazy. I'm not even going to put 10 feet all the way here. If I, if I just show my measuring sticks, uh, there's zero measuring sticks. Here's one measuring stick all the way to six measuring sticks. Super cool. I'm wondering, can you help me out with like, how many feet would that be? Oh, that would be 60 feet. Interesting, because like if this is 10 feet and that's 20 feet, then that must be 60 feet. And I'm wondering how much further do we need to go? And I'm wondering how does that impact um, your, your total distance? What do you think? How much further do we need to go based on our diagram? Okay, so we have so we have the 60 feet here and that brings us to I believe right here, right? Right there. That's 60 feet. And then how many more feet do we need? 8 feet. Okay, so I'm going to do this in a slightly different color just so that uh just so that we can see. So like this is a little shorter than our stick. And you were saying it's like an additional jump of 8 feet. And the result would be how many feet total? 68, love it, 68 feet. So I'm actually, I'm gonna update this for you to 68 feet. And maybe we'll come back to this a little later, okay? So I'm gonna leave this over here. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna see if we have other people in the room right now. Thank you so much for sharing. Is there anyone else in the room who feels good about 68? Are there, is there anyone else in the room who feels good about 68 feet? Let's see. Uh, 
any, you can use like an emoji or you could, you know, you could uh, put in the chat, like you feel good. Does it seem reasonable that 10 feet for the stick could be possible? I, I wanna just see like with an emoji, like let me know, does that seem possible? If you think yes, it seems possible, maybe we'll do a thumbs up. If it seems impossible to you, maybe we'll use like a surprised face. You're like, oh my gosh, that like that seems impossible. I don't know, let's see. I'm seeing some thumbs up. Okay, awesome stuff. So we have some friends who agree. I'm wondering, does someone have a different perspective? Does someone think maybe the length of each measuring stick is maybe not 10 feet? Maybe it's a different amount. Who would like to share with us? What do you think? And miss, I am shocked that my children have not shown up on the scene yet. So I'm just going to see. Yeah, I know. I know. Mine mine usually show up, but uh, I think they're on the same nutrition break as Talbot Trail. So <laughs> that's probably why I haven't heard from them yet. All right. Lots of thumbs up. Ooh, 72. So if it was 72 feet, I'm going to go like this and I'm going to go, okay, 72 feet. Let's work with that for a second. I'm wondering, huh, how long, if I was to redraw my diagram here, I'm gonna do my best, how long, so if this is all my sticks, I've got six sticks. Uh, there's three sticks, uh, here we are. Okay, here's my six sticks. So there's zero sticks, one stick, two stick, three stick, four stick, five sticks, six sticks. And then we also have this extra eight feet. I'm curious, who wants to take a stab if, if the distance is 72 feet, if the distance is 72 feet in total, what might the length of each stick be here? Like in order for 72 feet, hmm. Oh, interesting, okay. Now I'm wondering, maybe I can challenge you and maybe I can challenge the rest of the room if like I'm gonna, we're, we're making an assumption here. Let's say that the total distance of that shot put was 72 feet. There's the shot put ball and there's our 72 foot marker. We know that this length right here is eight feet. Like we know that, we know that about this length right here. We know this is eight feet. I'm wondering, what does that mean for my measuring stick? Like this measuring stick can't be one measurement and then this one a different one. Like these are the same length measuring sticks. So what would that be? Like, how would I figure that out? I know that this is zero feet over here, but I guess my question is, is like, how long would one measuring stick be? How long would one measuring stick be if it was 72 feet? Hmm. And I'm going to give you some time to think on this, friends. Like, I personally, I don't like doing the thinking. I already did I already did uh, grade 6, 7, 8. I, I even did grade 9, 10, 11, and 12. So I, wa I, want, I want your thinking here. Uh, Miss, if you see any hands up who want to comment and help us, they don't necessarily have to tell us the length, but, like, maybe they can help us figure out, like, what would you do to figure out how long this stick would be if it is 72 feet indeed? Oh, whoa, holy smoke. So, okay, so that, let me let me make sure I'm hearing you right. You're saying like, well, if I know it's 72 feet and we had this extra eight feet, it's like, I got to like remove this in order to figure out the length of six sticks. So it's like you were like kind of working backwards. Up here, we went from 60 to 68. We added eight. It's almost like you're you're saying, wait a second, we're going to actually have to like subtract eight feet and you told me subtracting eight feet was 64 I think you said holy smokes now I'm wondering who I am trying to figure out if this is 64 I don't know how I'm gonna get all the way back here I wonder if there's anyone else maybe a different friend in the room who can help us with that you don't have to get right to here like I'm wondering could you use this to help you find out any of these other measurements here. Like, look at I got this measurement, I've got that measurement. I wonder, I don't know, like I'm looking at this, I'm like, 
I could maybe guess at what this measurement is, but I wonder, like, if I know that this is the length, I wonder if there's any measurements that are more obvious to me. Like, how could I figure out what those measurements are? Oh, gosh. This is so hard. Oh, my gosh. That is fantastic. Now, I'm going to have you pause there because I love your thinking. And you, maybe you know what that number is, but I'm going to I'm gonna pause there and I'm going to have you hold on to it for a second. If you know, awesome. So you're telling me it's like, well, if, if there's 64 feet, I need to divide it by the six sticks. I love that. I can definitely do that. For some people, they might be like, that's kind of hard for me. One thing I do know is that like 60 divided by six, I, I see that up here, 60 divided by six is 10. So I feel like 64 divided by six is going to be like a little more than 10, which is kind of cool, right? So that kind of helps. I'm wondering, I, I'm throwing this out there because I, wa I want to encourage those who may not feel comfortable dividing 64 by six without a calculator. I, I'm going to, I'm wondering if anyone in the room wants to take a stab at like, how long would three sticks be? I wonder if I was to do that, because like, I know 64 sticks. 64 feet is six sticks. I wonder like how long would that be? And I'm gonna like give you a clue here. It's like, look at how long this is. And then like, look at how long, uh, uh, stay, th stay there marker right there, stay there. If, if I like look at this length and then I was like, you know, I know that this length is 64 feet. I wonder what like that would, oh my gosh, that looks like the halfway point to me. Hmm. Can somebody help me with that? Maybe somebody miss like, do you want to go on a limb and like pick somebody to help us here? Like that's 64. And like, it's like, I've got like this candy bar and there's like two of us. And I just want to make sure we both have like an even or equal amount. I'm wondering like if we were to do some playing, like, so, so check this out. Like I'm looking at like this jump and this jump they should be the same distance, right? Cause it's like, it's like, this is half and th this is the other half. I wonder, like if I look back up here, like 60, what's half of 60? Half of 60 brings us to this point right here. I wonder what would that be? Can you help us with that? Whoa, okay, so here's my question that, oh my gosh, all my markers are falling apart here. Okay, here we go, 30, awesome. So wait a second. Now I want half of 64. So like, I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you right now that it's like, it's, it's 30, but there's a little more, right? Cause like, there's a little more here. Like, so if I took 60 and I halved it, I got 30. What about the extra four? What if I halved the four? What am I, what else am I getting here? Oh my gosh, look at that. So we got 32 feet here. Now I wonder if I know that, like for those who are like, wait, 64 divided by six is maybe like, er, not fun. Maybe this is a little easier. Like I feel like this is gonna be like 10. It's gonna be like 10, 20, 30. Oh, it's gonna be like 10 and a bit, right? It's gonna be like 10 and a bit. Hmm. So it's not quite 11, cause that would be 33. So it's gonna be like 10 and a half, 10 and, oh, like 10 and, actually it would be 10 and two thirds because there's two feet divided by three. Whoa, interesting. So that was one person's estimate. All right, we had 68 as an estimate. We had 72 as an estimate. I want you to lock in, in the chat, what is your final estimate? And then I'm gonna reveal one more piece of information that might help you. And then I wanna share with you what you're actually doing right now without maybe realizing it. Maybe someone out there realizes it, but maybe you don't. So I'm gonna have you in the chat, lock in. What's your number? And I'm gonna push you. If you pick a number, like if you pick 72, I want you to also, ch I want you to say, I said 72 because I think the length of the stick is blank and that, would give me 72. So if you said 75, what would the length of that stick have to be in order for 75 to work? Okay, so I want you to lock in your estimate 
and then how long is each stick based on that estimate. We've looked at a couple different strategies that'll help you get there without a calculator. I wanna give you that time now because this is really important. And then we're gonna spend like five minutes together before I let you all go and try a problem on your own. I want to make sure that we're clear on what's happening here because there's something happening here that you might know, but maybe you didn't know. Maybe it's something that you didn't notice and I'm gonna help you notice that. That's what math's all about. It's about noticing things so that you can use those things to help you with future problems, okay? So I'm gonna mute myself, I'm gonna turn my camera off. Your goal right now is to update what's your, what's your final estimate that you've come up with. I don't know if it's 68, I don't know if it's 72, but whatever that number is, I want you to have an actual amount for the length of each stick. So you can't just say 75 and that's it. You've got to you've got to be able to articulate what is the length of the stick. So maybe you want to pick the length of the stick first and help you get to your estimate. Maybe that's what you're maybe that's a good strategy for you to try. I I love it. We've got lots and lots of ideas coming out, which is great. Awesome stuff. I'm going to let I, I'm going to let a huge cat out of the bag, friends. I lied to you. Do you want to know what I what I lied? I said I didn't know how long the measuring sticks were, but I actually do. And here's what I want everyone to do. All right, I actually know. And uh, let's see if I can actually get. How am I gonna How am I gonna get there? Oh gosh, change my view. Here we go. Okay, here's the deal. I actually know for a fact that the length of each stick is actually 11 feet. I want everyone, everyone, I'd love you to update your estimate to the actual length of this particular shot put throw. And here's the most important part, and I'm gonna push Miss on this to make sure that she double checks with you, friends. I need you to convince us how far was the shot put through? You can't say between this and that because you know that each stick was 11 feet long exactly. I want to know how you know. Lots of people are like, 74, 74, 74. Amazing. Who's going to share, miss? Uh, who's going to share like the logic here? If, if it's 11 feet how the heck are we going to like know for certain here that 74 is in fact the uh the distance oh, holy smoke 66 divided by 6 is 11 for those people who are like whoa i don't know my 11 times tables totally cool cuz like the way i look at it i'm like wait what's the halfway point Half of 66 is, well, half of 60 is 30. Half of 6 is 3. So that's 33. Let's see if this actually works. Like, look at this. It's like, there's like 11. Uh, there's uh, 22. If I add another 11. Oh my gosh, there's 33. Uh, there's uh, 44. Uh, there is 55. And there is 66. Plus this additional eight, we went this way, so we said minus, but if you go that way, we're adding, holy smoke, 74. So wait a second, here's the crazy part that I need everybody to check out. Like this is what I call the consolidation of this lesson. And actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a limb. I'm wondering, could anyone like tell me what is the equation that we just solved here. Miss said that you were dealing with like algebra and like some collecting like terms and things recently. Holy smokes, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag and tell you that this right here, you solved an equation whether you realize it or not. And I'm wondering if we have a brave soul who might be interested in trying to take a stab at it. And remember, there's no judgment, right? There's no judgment here. We're like, we're just sharing our ideas. And I'm wondering like, what might this equation look like? Reminder, this is feet down here. Whoops, there it is, feet. And these are our sticks over here. I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm, I'm even gonna go on a limb. I'm, I'm gonna say like, maybe if we use like, oh, I'm not even gonna say anything else. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, 
take anyone off their thinking here. Yeah, I love that. And I'm going to pause there before I write anything down, because here's what I want to share with you. If I can get this little thing off my screen, go ahead and get there we are. I'm wondering if I was to look here and maybe maybe someone else in the room wants to share, like where is like over here, six X. And, and you, you mentioned this eight idea. So you know that needs to be involved. If I was to like block everything out and you were to look at how long six sticks is, can somebody tell me what like six X really is equal to? Like what's six X really equal to? Like here's sticks, here's like one, one X, two X, three X, four X, five X, six sticks is equal to, hmm. Oh, uh, I'm looking in the chat. I'm seeing some cool ideas here. What are we thinking? Like that right there, this is like the number of sticks. That's six. But X actually represents something else. X represents something else. Anybody want to take a chance? Like someone had said like what we were looking for was what? And I ended up giving it to you. I love it. Length. And actually, I'm going to use a tricky word, but it's really important. It's the rate. How much per stick? So it's the length per stick. Length per stick. That's what this guy is. And I told you what that was. Now, here's the crazy part. I saw in the chat, and just because of time, and I know you friends probably need some DPA to get up and moving around. So I want to, I want to wrap this thing up with a little bow here. And I want to make sure that we're nice and everyone sees what's happening. We have six sticks here. Each stick had a rate of 11 feet per stick. That was our X up here. Okay, we'll use that in a moment. But we had to, and earlier we heard this, there was this like eight idea. It's like, is it minus eight? Is it plus eight? It really just depends on where you are. R. Oh, and I think I wrote down 72 earlier, and it's actually 74 that we had over here. So let me just fix that up. I think I probably heard you incorrectly. So there's 74. There's our total length. If I look at six sticks with a length of 11 feet per stick, I need to add, add an additional eight feet in order to get us to 74. So our equation here looks something like this. However, I saw Raymond had something earlier. Raymond said, actually, like, I think it's like, uh, I think Raymond said it's uh, 6x. And uh, Raymond said it's 74 minus 8. And I'm going to argue that, you know what, Raymond? You're absolutely correct because it's equivalent. This is an equivalent, equivalent equa equation to this equation over here. Like if I have eight extra on this side, it's equal to 74. If I have eight less on this side, it's equal to 6x. These are the same. The equation looks different, but it is exactly the same. And I guess what I wanna share is like, if I have 6x plus eight, if I subtract eight from 74, look at subtract eight from 74, it brings me to the length of six sticks. If I subtract eight from 74, I'm at six sticks, right? And something else over here, like if I have six X plus eight, it brings me, so if I go plus eight, it brings me to 74, just like we see here. All of these expressions are exactly the same. They're equivalent. They look different, but they are still equivalent each side is the same quantity. The quantities are shifting a little bit, but they are still in balance. They are still in balance. And then somebody earlier told me, they said, wait a second, if I, if I divide by six, that tells me, if I divide by six, that tells me that the length per stick is 11. Over here, we divided this number by six in order to get this number. Something else we could have did is we could have said, you know what, let's take, let's take half. Oh man, my marker, 
is this is horrible oh no do i have another color around probably not okay let me do this if i take half of 6x and half of 66 guess what i get well i get half of 6x's what well, what's half oh that's 3x's 3x's oh if i take half of 66 oh my gosh i get 33 that's equivalent wait a second if i take one third of three x's and if i take one third of 33 wait a second that gives me one x one third look at this boom one two one two three thirds holy smokes x is 11. so what we've done here today using this model this model is really helpful for us when we're solving for unknown values. So if you can try to organize, like, what do I know about a problem? You can use this model to help you get there, or you can use an algebraic equation to get there. They're both totally legit. And guess what? I'm gonna argue that if you brought this to a court or you brought this to a court, the jury would be comfortable with either of these. Now in a math class, we're gonna encourage you to be able to do it as many ways as you can. So to be able to show it both ways is even better, right? It just shows how much you understand the thinking. So the last thing that I wanna share with you friends today is this. I wanna give you a problem to work on and miss, you can decide like whether you wanna do DPA now, maybe they wanna solve this later, totally up to you. But I wanna give you, I wanna give you one more problem and i'm going to share it right here in the chat for you i want to know based on another shot put throw this is a different shot put throw okay they they do more than one shot put throw and they used a different measuring stick here it comes in the chat sometime this year it's coming sometime this year here we go it's a red measuring stick. It's a different length than the brown measuring stick. This time I'm telling you how far the throw was. I'm telling you how many measuring sticks and I'm telling you how many feet they had to pace out from the fourth measuring stick to the shot put ball. And the question I have is how long is the red measuring stick? That my friends is for you to work on and miss you can decide how you want to do that oh uh, you are so awesome thank you so much and all of you friends i must say miss sometimes i go into uh, virtual classes like i work at the virtual school a lot and sometimes people get very very nervous or shy and they don't want to participate because it's a new person in the room so i've got to say holy smokes what an awesome group all active awesome stuff Okay, friends, I'm gonna let you work on this. I'm super curious, miss, if you snag any really cool um, uh, solutions, flip them my way. And I'm hoping that maybe we can uh, we can do a little bit more of this either vir in virtual land like this or maybe in person once we're back face to face. Well, 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 my friends, what are your thoughts after spending some time looking at the shot put or day one of the shot put unit where we explore substitution into equations, but we do it in kind of a sneaky little way. We emerge this idea and uh, we leverage the idea of equivalence as well as a tool that students can use when they're encountering equations, uh, substituting in for unknowns, as well as solving for unknown quantities with variables. Uh, so where can you go to find that particular unit and dive in with your class? Well, you head over to makemathmoments.com forward slash tasks. That'll bring you to our problem-based tasks and units site, and you can dive into that shot put unit. Uh, I really encourage you to dive in at uh, days two, three, four, and beyond. Actually go pretty far. We actually get to solving systems of equations a little later on. That's a little beyond the scope of your course. That's okay. Go as far as you feel is appropriate, but I'm going to tell you something that even if uh, solving systems of equations is a little beyond the scope of your course. I promise you that if students work through this unit, 
in a problem-based way where they're using their intuition, we're emerging these models and these big ideas, the idea of equivalence and uh, an algebraic substitution using our double number line, as you saw in day one. Uh, I'm telling you right now, students are going to use that experience in order to do some pretty amazing things. So give it a shot. Let us know in the comments below, what were your, what, what's your thoughts? Do you have any reservations about using problem-based lessons? Is there any pebbles in your shoes that uh, maybe John or I from Make Math Moments can help you out with? If you've made it this far, then obviously we kept your attention. Do us a huge favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and share this video with a colleague. Uh, the more sharing you do, the bigger the audience we can build in order to elevate the purposeful or the, uh, the pedagogical practice, I should say, of all educators from around the world. Let's do this together. Let's make math education the best it possibly can be so we can build a productive disposition towards mathematics with every student in every single class. All right, that's it for me, and we'll see you in the next video.